Fred here, welcome back to the Gear Obsession channel. In this episode, we will be taking a look at the SOG Magnadot. Stay tuned. So I was strolling through Walmart looking for some good deals for you and me, and I came across this on the end cap. You know, right now this is the time of year when Walmart puts out the end caps with all the holiday gift ideas and they always have a whole bunch of these combo knife things from different manufacturers and there's bunches for from Buck and Gerber and surprisingly this year there was uh, a couple from SOG. So what they did was they took the uh, Magna Dot which comes with the knife and the pouch but they also added this uh, little fire starter slash sharpener right here. Um, they say it's a, a $20 value. We'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> but the thing comes all together for the unbelievable low price of $20, which is less than what the knife and pouch sell for by themselves. So let's take a closer look. Here's what comes in the packaging. Now before we go any further, while you're looking at this, I'm going to go ahead and try to classify this set here. This uh, I would classify as a large inexpensive lockback and its use I would probably put it in the budget camping survival category. Now SOG has a, a nice little description or overview for this knife that I'd like to read to you real quick and then we'll go ahead and start getting into this deeper. Um, SOG basically says that the Magna Dot is a meaty folder. It has substance and you know when it's in your hand. A traditional and reliable pattern that will give years of reliable use. The Magna Dot is more turtle than hair, easily opening the formidable half serrated blade with one hand gives you a sense of power. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and quickly look at the case. Actually, I like the uh, nylon here. It looks like a ballistic nylon. I like that it has a snap and not Velcro because I despise Velcro. Really pretty nice. You can mount it both vertical and horizontal here. And um, it, it's okay for a cheap knife. You know what you get with it. The only uh, criticism I really have of this thing is that it's not double stitched around the, the seams here. Other than that, I think it's a uh, pretty good quality for a cheapo knife. I'll go ahead and put this aside. And we'll take a look here. This is just the uh, catalog you get with most SOG products. And here is the free fire starter slash sharpener. As you can see, you get a, let me see, it looks like it says fire starter on this side. It has a little symbol for a little fire symbol. And here you have your sharpener so you could do the serrations and you have this little pad here so you could do the the flat part of the blade pretty nice it's free how can you argue you could wear it on a lanyard around your neck or something goofy whatever we'll, we'll try that out so here's the knife let's uh see how it feels now it's big um let's see if i can okay it will fling open <laughs> and wow actually it's quite comfortable now I have medium to large hands and uh, it feels pretty comfortable it's very uh, you know all the edges are sort of rounded and smooth sort of melts into your hand um, one thing I notice is there's you know no jimping up here or anything like that and there's not too much jimping or, or grooves or anything on any of this knife so um, just make sure you get a good grip when you're stabbing which we'll try here shortly I love how the the edge here does this little doodad thing so it looks like a clip point again it's partially serrated we'll take a close look at the serrations there but um really nice knife good all-purpose style blade again serrations to cut um, rope and such and then you have your flat edge for you know slicing gutting uh, you got a good clip point here which would be good for stabbing so good all-purpose blade now um, let's take a close look here and see what kind of quality we're getting for a cheap $20 knife. Now you can see in there there's uh, a lot of Mars and um, machining marks left in there. You can see that. 
Also, while you're looking down in the handle, you notice that there are no liners, and this handle is strictly uh, uh, GRN, glass reinforced nylon. So um, they're really pushing it. Well, actually, there is no play or anything, so I guess they, they've done pretty good. They kept it thick enough where it doesn't really need the liners, and that's what is really keeping it very, very light. Got a little backspacer here. Here is the lock. This is a lock back. Let's see, lockup is very good. No side to side play. The up and down, the little minute is typical of a lock back. You get it where that lock will just give a little bit when you press up. That That's normal for lock backs. But there really is no up and down play or side to side play. You have a lanyard hole there. It, it's very comfortable. Very comfortable in reverse grip also. I really like it. Now, um, let's go over the specifications really quick. Blade length is 3.63 inches. Overall length is 8.4 inches. Weight is a very light 4.4 ounces. It is very light for its size. You have a half serrated edge, as you can see there. The steel is 7CR17MOV. This is the Chinese equivalent to our 440A. Because it's equivalent, it also shares the same uh, Rockwell hardness of 55 to 57. And the finish on here is sort of a satin finish or, or a brushed kind of look to it, which is pretty good. The handle, again, is GRN, no liners. And it includes, again, the fire starter slash sharpener and the pouch. So, this cost a very inexpensive $20, and the reason why you're getting it so cheap is because it's made cheaply by slave labor in China, and then sold by China Mart. Uh, I mean Walmart. <laughs> um, the texture here is not too bad either. It's not overly aggressive at all. It's, it's functional. Alright, so it's time for some tests. Let's uh, first start with blade centering. Let's see how blade centering looks. Uh-oh, here's our first problem. You can see blade centering is way over to one side. We we'll, uh, may have to adjust, adjust that. It is possible to do some adjustments. There are screws here. They appear to be Allen, Allen screws right there. So there is a way to adjust it. Now, another thing I'm noticing here is it does not look like um, first appearance that you can disassemble this knife because I don't see any other screws here. So, um, hmm, that, that's kind of interesting. So, no way to, uh, so this might be a little difficult to clean because, you know, you have that spacer in the lock back so dirt will sort of cake up in there and that could be a little hard to clean and you can't really disassemble it. What's next? Blade retention. Alright, it's in there pretty good. Blade is not coming out and it doesn't start really, it, it's pulling back all the way to there. So really good blade retention. Lockup engagement, I guess we tested it. No blade play back and forth or up and down. So let's go ahead and do our customary paper test. And let's see if it's uh, sharp out of the box. Look at that. It's almost push cutting. It looks like I, it caught a little bit of an imperfection there. But um, it's uh, very good. So it's very sharp out of the box. Hey, don't be reading my notes. So what's next? Uh, we did the paper cut. Next is a wood stabbing <laughs> test. And this is to make sure that the point doesn't break easily. So I'm going to just go ahead and um, drop this in here a little bit. Whoops, and I just stabbed my desk. All right. You can see I'm really getting it in there good. All right, so let's take a look at the point real good. 
it looks like it did well doesn't look like I lost anything there it, it kept its point so it did pass the test uh, I can't believe I stabbed my desk there all right and last but not least ergonomics ergonomics um, I love the feel of this I really do the only uh, concern I have as far as ergonomics is that you know they, they could have put some jipping there but again they're keeping the cost down but this this choil here um, and your your texture here should be good enough you know as long as you're holding it nice and tight and you saw that I did some light stabbing there that you shouldn't have a problem by the way ambidextrous thumb studs right there as you can see so uh, this knife is perfectly ambidextrous so because there is no no clip of any sort it's meant to carry in a pouch which is why I basically said that this is not really um, an EDC it, it's more of a you know camping survival maybe a little work knife cheap bang them up work knife also would be uh, a good use for this so let's uh let's see how well this works here now you can see it it's so small it's uh <laughs> it's really hard to sharpen on this thing you know this is more maybe of an emergency or field kind of thing I don't know and for the serrations that's the white part it's sort of like ceramic you can go ahead and touch up your serrations there just a little bit I guess sort of like that somehow now it also has the fire starter I guess I could use the back and we could see how well that works there we go you saw some spark there okay now I'm gonna catch this on fire so the fire starter works and you could use the top of the blade just like the pear grills you don't need a special mark to tell you strike here you could just use the back again when you when you use these fire starters you know you should have your tinder here and you you know you put your knife on top or whatever you want to strike the the flint or whatever and you don't want to pull the knife because that creates a wind and it could blow the tinder you just pull the fire starter away apply pressure and pull away is a better way of doing it don't have to do it that way it's just the way I would recommend doing it all right so I'm gonna give this a uh, a uh, 8 out of 10 if you get this for $20 or less with the free fire starter um, if you get this with you know that's not in the um, special prize pack where you get, where you get this thing um, uh, I, I would give it a 7 out of 10 because the the workmanship is so poor I mean it's it's not terribly bad but it's typical Chinese but I've seen Chinese products even in this range that are just a little bit better again you could see you know the quality there lots of machining marks and everything and the blade centering you know blade centering is so th those are actually my cons right there the, you know the blade centering the shoddy workmanship made in China kind of thing so as far as pros are concerned you're getting an awful lot you're getting an awful lot a very nice pouch this little free guy and this for the unbelievable low price of uh, you know $19.99 that's really good to be honest and so if you're looking for a beater kind of knife again something to bring into the woods or you know hard press survival situation you don't have a lot of money that you know this could do it there there's it's not too bad uh, one other thing that I I noticed is that it does fit very tightly in this pouch it's very very tight you can leave it open and it ain't even gonna come out and uh, one one slightly disappointing thing is you know they sort of threw this in as a freebie but they didn't provide any way for it to fit in the pouch with the knife so whatever it's free so they say <laughs> or their profit margin is so great that they can throw this in here and still make money that's that's the truth part <laughs> so anyway you notice all this stuff here I am running a contest um, Mike's in the way a little bit let's move that over again um, I have a contest that I just started I'll put the link below to the contest 
And these are the prizes. I got a uh, Logitech squeeze box, a survival manual, one, my favorite one, and a roughneck flashlight. The contest ends December 21st, the end of the world as we know it. <laughs> and uh, you should check out, at least check out the video, see if it's something you're interested in participating in. So, thank you very much for joining me here at the Gear Obsession channel. I, as always, appreciate every friend, viewer, subscriber, and you, and I hope you have a great evening. Be careful.